So it takes a while for the cameras to turn on. I, I noticed that in the test video, it always. And then we appear on screen. Like so that. today is Monday, March 11th, 2024. I'm Aunt BB, AKA also known as Barb Hammer. You had to think about that. Which, for people, which people claim is a fake name, but it's real. I have the documents. But you and had, joining me once you had again. To think about it. You had to think about it for a second, like as if you had to remember it. Uh, who, who am I? No, I used to have. I've gotten out of the hat of my intro. I'd say, "Hey, everybody, it's Ann Beebe. <laughs> <laughs> that was the old intro. Um, and joining me today is, I guess, the semi-retired Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Because I got all sort of bougie. I got all, uh, all bougie and shit, so I had to retire. No, you're not really. You're just sort of stepping back yeah. a little bit, I guess. Yeah. I'm joining the ranks of the unemployed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the truly unemployed. <sighs> I saw a uh, RFK Jr. fucking video. He did that fucking campaign video. Uh, mm -hmm. Where he's talking, what it but it basically is is a three three minute fifty second something something second uh, uh, imitation. Remember that scene from it's not in Network. Oh, God damn it, I can't remember what show it was, and I can't remember the act Jeff something, the guy who has like silver like. Uh, silverish blonde hair, and he's in a he's in the auditorium, and they're asking him questions, and that actor that I used to was in college with me, uh -huh. Jason Butler Harner is in the scene on the stage playing some uh -huh. fucking two faced. You've seen this scene, I know you've seen it. Once I explain it, yeah, I don't. And the guy that. goes, "Okay, well, how about you? The same question to you." Uh, why is America the best place in the world? And he goes, no comment. And, and, and they said, no, seriously, go ahead. He goes, uh, no comment. And they go, uh, no, seriously, go ahead. And Jason Butler Harner character looks at him and he goes, uh, why is America the best country in the world? Asks him again. And he goes, it isn't. And then he lays out this whole long list of statistics that um. prove if you look at the statistics, the United States is not the freest, best country in the world. And he goes, is it freedom? Mm -hmm. He says, there's 190 countries that have fucking freedom. Everyone's got fucking yeah, freedom. Yeah. Remember that scene? Did you remember that scene? I'm not sure exactly which movie or whatever you're talking about. It, TV it show. Sound, huh? What? A TV show. TV show. Oh, a TV show. If you look up, it's, it's, I'll tell you the title of the video and you'll remember. It sounds vaguely familiar, but I'm not, I, I couldn't tell you the actor or the TV show, I don't know. It sounds vaguely familiar. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the video was titled uh, mm -hmm. The Greatest Two Minutes on from Network Television. Oh, okay. All right. And he explains to this auditorium full of college students why mm -hmm. the United mm -hmm. States really isn't the best. Yeah, place. it sounds vaguely familiar with something okay. that was circulated a lot a number of years, years ago. ago. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What he's basically doing is he's copying that and he's updating the fucking uh, oh, numbers. That's what he's doing. So he's he's just Did copying. You, what? Yeah. Did you see that rapping video he made? Oh God! In Atlanta. Jesus. Huh? Jesus. Well, he's not really <laughs> rapping. He's he's just talking. No, it's a rap, but he's just talking. Right. Yeah. Right. They just sampled him over that, and then it's just so fucking stupid. It's just so stupid. <laughs> I compare that to Joe Biden taking fried chicken to a black family. It is. Yeah. That's what I thought of when I saw that. It's like, wow. shameless pandering. Yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's insulting. But in, 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 in the same sense, so too is his, his, the video he did, the three minute video he did, laying out all of this stuff about the United States. You know, okay. of course, later in the end, he's going to explain how. Uh, we have to release the free markets uh, to yes, make things course. fucking better. 
you know, right now our healthcare system is like we're like ranked 40th or something but in the westernized world in terms of healthcare and access to healthcare, but like 40th. And his solution is uh, more of the same. We just need free. Well, it's yeah, it's worse yeah. up here. We actually have in Canada. We have we still have a, a universal single payer healthcare system. Right. So the, the this is what I get disgusted with the COVID skeptic community. They think the solution is the pri the solution to the problems of private infiltration of the system more. is to it's privatize the whole fucking thing. Right. 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 And I, that pisses me right off. That yeah, and the, uh, that's their solution. <laughs> People just don't understand it. I was talking to not somebody. get the private sector out of our public health system. But right. just privatize the whole fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> because it's freedom. <laughs> yeah. Liberty. Uh, I was talking to a Lyft driver this weekend and uh, explained a situation that happened several years ago. Uh, I was, I was, was, it was the uh, Obamacare, the push for Obamacare back in the day. And uh, some of us just wanted universal health care. Uh, I said, oh, well, there's going to be no single payer advocates in this fucking. Uh, sage group of people putting this thing together. Of course, there was no single payer advocate, but there were plenty of Mitt Romney's dudes who actually put this fucking fascist piece yeah, of shit together it was in Romney Massachusetts. Care. It was Romney yes. care. Right. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, they, they were there, but the single payer advocates, that's <laughs> fucking communism. We'll talk about communism and cake in a few seconds, I'm sure. But uh, I was telling him about <laughs> this, and uh, he's, 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 he's working, he works in the post office. It has a good post office job, a good, right. fuck, a good fucking uh, federal job, I guess it is. Yeah. Uh, and so he gets good benefits. You know, he's talking about, yeah, but I got to I got to drive Lyft just to make ends meet. And I was like, what? He's talking about the fact that, you know, even with the unions, yeah. they've got a he still got to pay like for a family. He's still got to pay like three hundred and sixty dollars per paycheck, which comes to seven hundred and twenty dollars per month. <laughs> And they still have co-pays and deductibles and all that shit. And I told him, I said, I was having, having a conversation back during those days with somebody at this place, uh, uh, some kind of sports bar thing. Back in the day, I was watching football and shit. And uh, I was talking quietly to somebody, just conversational tones. But another person heard me saying socialist shit. Oh, and so he had to get involved in the conversation. Because we were talking about I don't know. I'm having a conversation with this woman, and I, this this voice, and I turn and look at here's this you know, red dude, and uh, this is before you know Trump was running, so I wouldn't say a Trumpite, but it was somebody like that, and he's like, uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, don't you understand? He goes, I mean, that's that's I, I was watching Fox News, and they told me I was going to pay five six thousand dollars extra in taxes a year if I get if it goes to universal health care. Huh? What do you say about that? I just went, how much is your current premium? And, yeah, could, and deductibles and co-pays. Yeah. I just asked him that quietly, yeah. just like that. that. That was as loud as I got. Yeah. What's your yeah. current premium? <laughs> and I could see the wheels turning in his head. He was, he was so... <laughs> He started thinking about it, and then he was doing the math, and I could see the fucking smoke coming out of his ears. He was doing the math. Oh, shit, I'm paying more than that right now just for premiums. Mm -hmm. Just for premiums. And I said, and, now, and then I told him, like you said, I said, now add deductibles and copay. Also add in the fact that uh, how many times has something happened to one of your family members where an insurance company says, that's not covered. We're yeah, not they don't. Right. Yes. I mean, you won't get that in universal health care. You need something? Your kids need something? Yeah. That's, I know. That's why the COVID skeptic community, most of them, almost, it's really disgusting. They are really going at the system in Canada. Oh, it's so terrible. They were TikTok videos. Somebody told me about all these TikTok videos about how bad it is in Canada. And they said, what's going on? And this is somebody in Nicaragua where they have <laughs> evil socialism. And I said, oh, yeah, they want to take down the universal single payer health care system. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like our taxes, considering it, you know, we're paying nothing really. You know, I told I told my husband, like I just think I just go to the fucking doctor. I don't pay anything. I went to a specialist in Vancouver. 
an mm-hmm. eye specialist, I didn't pay anything, right. nothing. Right. Yeah. And they have just uh, introduced dental care for people here covered. The government is covering dental care. That's and it. they introduced a, <laughs> like drug, the prescription drugs here are for the most part pretty low. Yeah. Like pretty good. That's why so many people in the U.S. would go to Canada for prescription drugs because they were. Yeah, the, that was the thing. government. Yeah, but they're actually introducing a pharmacare system to cover. They're starting out with uh, like um, um, diabetes medication and uh, uh, birth control uh, for women and whatever. Yeah, they're starting out. At, at, so, you know, the people on the right, the COVID skeptics, oh, you know, they're just going at the government. I mean, Justin Trudeau, terrible. And what was done during the pandemic, terrible. Um, but this is their solution is just to bring the whole system down and privatize everything. Privatize everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that, that settles it. You guys are going to have to take that. Maybe that room you're in right now and move all this shit out because I got quite a bit about a bunch of shit. But if you got dental, free dental care out there, <laughs> moving up to fucking Canada. <laughs> Here I come. Oh, God, we got a border. Something, yeah. Oh, God, Jake, we got a border. We got to move. Didn't you tell me a while ago, I said, well, we were talking about places to go and you were thinking about different places to move to and maybe, you know, uh, getting out with this all the COVID shit. But really, what was one thing that kept you in Canada that you told me? I tell this to people all the time. People in the U.S. will say, oh, it's so terrible in Canada. Why don't you come down here? Come back yeah. here. You know, I'm born and raised, and I worked for a while in the U.S. I have dual citizenship. And I tell them all the time, the one thing that keeps me here and not in the U.S., and I love the U.S., and I visit all the time, is I don't want to go bankrupt because of healthcare. That is the one thing. Yeah, that's it. That's what it comes down to. I, back in the in the in the Obamacare days, people were tossing around the numbers because it was advantageous to do so. What was that 2010? How many times since then have you heard people talk about how many people a year still go bankrupt even because of a simple fucking medical condition? even after Obamacare, or even better still, with Obamacare. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'd, I have cousins. I'd I have love relatives. To, I'd love My whole family story. is in the U.S., and I've, they've told me so many stories. Yeah, yeah. they can't afford to use their, their health, health insurance. They can't right. afford to use it. Right. right. Yeah, it doesn't really do them any good. And there were so many people on the right in Canada who went down to Nicaragua and they were shocked. So they were trying to escape all the lockdowns and mandates and things. And they went down there, socialist Nicaragua, Sandinista government, and they were shocked because there were no lockdowns, mandates down there. And it just shocked them. It just threw threw them because their whole worldview about evil socialism. They expected everyone to be walking around in these drab gray outfits with these, like, you know, those, 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 they weren't baseball caps, but they were like round caps with a little, with a little bill on the front. Remember that? They, they were gray. And we used to, we used to always picture people in China having to wear it. You know, everybody has to wear the same thing and they're all walking with their hunched yeah. backs and stooped yeah. shoulders. Mm. Yeah. Are you happy? Yes, I love, I love communism. I love communism. That's what they expect to find. Instead, they, they find Beijing, you know, or they find a, a, a country like Nicaragua where people are happy. They have amusement parks for the families, you know, that are basically free. They have, they just built this big baseball stadium there. Where people, like, yeah, it's fantastic for families down there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what are we talking about today on BB? You're screwing this cat. Well, I told you the other day that I bought something I'd heard so much about, I'd never seen or tasted, a little taste of communism. (laughs) So it's the famous Kiev cake, not Kiev. 
p.m. came. <laughs> so I was in a local supermarket and I was so surprised in the frozen food section. A Kiev cake dun, <laughs> from dun, Ukraine. Dun. Oh, I got to hold it still for a second so we can read it. As if we could read it. There you go. It's in Ukrainian. Now, is Ukrainian very similar to Russian? It's basically a dialect. Really. Dialect of Russian. Okay. Well, here's, I've told people this, like when I was at NSA for eight years, when I was being interviewed, mm -hmm. there was some uh, Ukrainian, Ukrainian Americans applying for jobs <laughs> at NSA. And um, so NSA would give people test applicants and these uh, Ukrainian Americans told me NSA had no test for Ukrainian, <laughs> no way to test Ukrainian. It just wasn't a language they. <laughs> it wasn't a language they gave a shit about. No, <laughs> it is just like you can like. I bet that's just changed a now. Huh? I bet that's changed now. It may be that people will specialize their linguists in Ukrainian. Yeah, so it's really just a dialect, and and it's kind of like a. Uh, a blend of maybe Polish and Russian or something. I don't know. Because historically. <laughs> so I can read, I can read Ukrainian. The, you know, the alphabet is just slightly different. You can see there's a Western influence. Yeah. Yeah. My audio settings change. I don't know why. You can hear me okay, right? You're fine, I hear you. Okay. You're good. Oh, I can read, you know, it's basically the Russian Cyrillic alphabet with some slight differences. And, you know, vocabulary is a little bit different. Um, but it's the same length, you know, the Russian roots are in Ukraine. The Russian and Ukrainian people came from Ukraine, you know. Just, you go ahead and have this conversation. I'm going to go step over there real quick. Uh, there's a there's a beaver smoking a cigarette. I'm gonna go join him. When you when you're done with mm -hmm. the you're done with the the, the language, uh, then then let me know when, okay. you, when you decide to break into the cake. Because all the people out there are like we're okay, BB, fine. Well, I'm so, breaking out the the Russian break out vodka the cake. first. What? <laughs> oh my God. Oh. <laughs> you gonna go? Is this a drunk stream for BB? <laughs> Are you gonna are you gonna transition to a drunk IRL streamer in real life streamer? <laughs> well, uh, I might so I might do that. I might. Do I will, that. I'm taking the lid off the cake. Okay. This is the unboxing of the cake. Yeah, I had taken the plastic wrap. Oh, it came and it had these nice ribbons with the name of the company. The name of the company that makes the cake. In Ukraine now, is it's Russian. It's Russian. Huh? It's Jewish. No, no, it comes from. Get this. Petro Porky. Po Oshenko, Poroshenko's. Poroshenko. Yeah, the the fascist who was installed in 2014, because <laughs> he was a big. Uh, he was an owner of the company. So they took. Roshan from his last name, Poroshenko. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the name of the company that makes the cake now. It's a Soviet creation. It was created in 1956 by, get this, the Karl Marx Confectionery Factory. <laughs> <laughs> but the, here's the cake. This is what it looks ah, like. Now we finally yeah. see the cake. Hold it slow. Don't move. Don't move. Stop wiggling. Is that like a landscape? What is that supposed to be? Uh, no, it's like flowers. No, and look at it. Those trees. Hold it up again. I don't know. Now, is that is. water and Oops. trees and mountains? Drop the thing here. Drop it. Oh, that looks really cool. Yeah. All righty. I'd see pictures of it, and when I opened it up, I'd go, oh, it looks exactly like yeah. the photos I'd seen. There you go. So, created in 1956 by the Karl Marx Confectionery <laughs> Factory. Yeah, and it was very popular. It was sold all over the Soviet Union. And they still make it in Ukraine. So, but it's a communist creation. Commie cake. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure a city group owns it by now. <laughs> oh, no, get this. Poroshenko had to, um, when he became president of Ukraine, 
He had to um, put his ownership in a blind trust, or he sold it. Get this: the Rothschild banksters, yeah. the banking, banking family. I told you it's going to be. I told you it's going to be a bank. A bank owns a bar. It was the Rothschilds of all people. Yes, <laughs> they own everything. Yeah. So, are you going to sample the cake? Yes, I am. Oh. Yes, I'm going to cut a little slice here. <laughs> I'm just staring at the empty chair. That's not. Oh, who was this that? This is a pretty solid cake. So it came frozen. So I thawed it out in the fridge. And you keep it refrigerated. God. This is kind of tricky here. Damn commie for you. Commie cake. Damn commie God. cake. Okay, I got a little piece of it here. Can't even make cake right. Huh? They can't even make cake right. Damn commies. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Yay! It's a mukbang! <laughs> avocado, avocado has nothing on BB. That's interesting. Tasty. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay, you can be more just this Chocolate. is more descriptive. Thank you. Chocolate, what else? Chocolate. Well, they got meringue in here and uh, are there nuts? Nuts, hazelnuts. Yeah, on the box. The box says, um, yeah, I was I used a translation app. I could kind of understand a little bit on the box label. So it says. Um, time tested recipe, um, hazelnuts with uh, sweet butter. So it's got brandy, it's got alcohol in it, it's got everything. Does it say death to the imperialist anywhere on there? What? Does it say death to the imperialist scum anywhere? <laughs> what? It's a commie cake, death to the imperialist scum. Come on, work with me here. It's very tasty, it looks very tasty. It is, it's good. It's good. So you, you waited for this video to be able to, 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 to try the commie cake? This is the first time you've had a chance to taste it? Well, somebody told me, suggested that I do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be the same individual I heard coughing a few minutes ago? Were you coughing? No. I thought he was coughing. He was coughing. The guy who lives with you. Oh, Jake. Yeah. No, he said, why don't you... Um, wait to oh, to cut into the cake no. in the video. Oh, yeah. Oh, get this. So there was a, a factory that made these in Mariupol. Mm -hmm. And um, on the Oscars, on, at the Oscars yesterday, you know, the best documentary award went to 20 days in Mariupol, <laughs> and a, which I watched on YouTube. Yeah. So yeah. they had to close that factory when the the war began in Ukraine. Yeah. 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 But that 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 documentary, that's just pathetic. It's like the worst piece of crap I've ever seen. It's so cliche. It's the shaky cam and yeah. running around in hospitals. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of White Helmet's <laughs> staged <laughs> crap. White helmet stage crap, the uh, ISIS beheading stage yeah. crap. Yeah, that's what it reminded crap. me of. Yeah. And some of it, I remember there was one scene that it was staged. People, it was proven that it was staged, and they included that. So these are journalists. So the maker is Ukrainians. So mm -hmm. there's like three Ukraine, but they all work for the Associated Press, right. a prop Western propaganda yeah. <laughs> outlet. Yeah. And then it was co-produced by PBS Frontline. Propaganda broadcasting yeah, frontline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PBS frontline is just notorious for that crap. They didn't used to be. Again, yeah. you know, there, were, there, there are a lot of good programs. These 60 Minutes, CB, uh, uh, Frontline. These yeah. things used to be like, yes, you know, the epitome of fucking yeah. actual journalism you could yeah. fucking trust. And then, you know, they just got bought up. They yeah, got it's, been, it's all these billionaire foundations that. 
and bought them up. Yeah, it's all privatized. All these, so. they, they, they are more and more dependent on uh, the foundation's money. And so once they become more dependent on the foundation's money, somebody up on high says, you know what, maybe we shouldn't cover that story quite that way. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you can, uh, it's like the, uh, what's my case with the uh, GMO case down here in Florida and uh, genetically modified uh, organ organisms uh, being put in milk with that back in 2000 and maybe five or six. There's a big story about that and these GMOs and in the, the milk and all these extra hormones and yeah. <laughs> they would, and, and they made, they spun all this, all this money on this fucking documentary to expose it. And then in the end, I think it was Fox. I think it was Fox that said, you know what, we're not going to air it. Because the dairy producers, you know, they it was going to cost, it was going to hurt their business. You know, and so they eventually said, you know, we're not we're not going to produce it. And then that that went out. That went people back in those days. It wasn't that long ago. Back in those days, a story like that comes out. Oh my God, you're fucking keeping the truth from the people. And people got mad. Even Fox News viewers got mad. You know, uh, but that's that's doesn't happen now. It doesn't happen these days. We just, no, we just the, it. Remember hmm? the movie The Insider about the uh, ins yeah. yeah. So the guy that he was a uh, Lowell, I can't remember his name, the producer from CBS. He got so he was I don't know if he was fired or he quit. So he went to PBS and he went to Frontline. So for a while, Frontline, they produce some decent yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's just total crap. It's just total crap. Yeah. And the, here, the 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 public broadcaster here, CBC, is the same way. It's been privatized so much. It's just, they used to produce decent programming, and now it's mostly crap. <laughs> so is that a thumbs up or a thumbs down on the comedy cake? Um, it's good. I'm sure it's not. I, I can tell, like, I don't know how long ago it was shipped from Ukraine. It doesn't taste fresh. Let's say that. But I can tell it's a tasty, it's a nice <laughs> recipe. If you I could see. get it, if you could get it fresh in Ukraine. If they still make them, I wonder. Yeah, I wonder if they're still making these things. Um, so yeah, I watched that documentary 20 Days in Mariupol. And what I'm la I told Jake <laughs> after I watched it. Let's see. The sign. So Mariupol is a Russian city. Yeah. It's in it's in the, that Donetsk region in Donbas in eastern Ukraine. Well, yeah. it's not in it's not in Donbas, but it is it is well, east. Donetsk. It's, it's in, in be, it's in between. Right, 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 right. It's, it's in, in the, the original administrative it's, region it's, Donetsk. Yeah. Right, it's in Donetsk, yeah. but it's not in the original Donbas. But now, after the war. It's going to be fucking Russia again, you know. Well, this. the Russians captured it. Remember yeah. that big battle at the Azov uh, Steel, Azov Stall, uh, Iron and Steel Works? Yeah, they were. They were, they were. Yeah. They were under so siege. Three months, the and the Russians captured Mariupol. Yeah. And it's basically a Russian city because, um, as far as I can tell, like I only took, I only went through intermediate Russian in college, and uh, that was years ago. But to my ear, they're just speaking Russian. And when the journalist, journalist, hmm. asked people in the street what their names are, they're Russian names. Yeah. But they're speaking Russian. The signage is almost all in Russian that I can tell. It's Russian. The ambulances, the signage is Russian. Yeah. And I can understand it. A lot of the southern and eastern parts of Ukraine were like that. They became refugees or, or, or uh, uh, Places where certainly after 2014, but even up before that, you know, a lot of the the the, the Russian leaning, Russian supporting Ukrainians uh, were still Ukrainians and still happy to be living in Ukraine. But they also kind of gravitated to the east and down to the south where Mariupol is and, and uh, um, Donetsk is and, and all of that. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's 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 pretty soon it's going to be officially Russia, just like uh Donbass. Uh, and I think a little bit uh, uh, north and west of, you know, kind, kind of following that, that, that arc of the uh, Donbass region into Lugansk. Like I think Kharkiv, part of that's gonna, Kharkiv. Yeah, Kharkiv. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. I think that's Kharkiv gonna, is the Russian name. Yeah. 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 That's going to all be fucking Russian. It's going to all be Russian.
Yeah, but I can tell they're speaking Russian, signages in Russian, um, Russian names. But the, I didn't like how the journalist was saying, what's your name, what's your name, what's your first name, what's your last name? And two people actually gave them him their names. And I thought, why would you do that? And One no, woman no. at the start was smart. She said, I have no name. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, somebody got mad at him and called them prostitutes. Prostitutes is what I call them. Hmm. Yeah, they were... Yeah, they didn't trust this media. <laughs> and there was one point where they were, they were showing people who had taken shelter and one woman shouts out, the Ukrainian army <laughs> is, is bombing us. Yeah. So they blame all the deaths and everything. Oh, it's the Russians and Putin, that bastard Putin, you know, the Russian army and all, like, like all the casualties they're blaming on the Russians. <laughs> well, the Ukrainian army was bombing civilians. They were they were just lobbing shit. Those people who were uh, under siege and the, the 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 Ukrainian military that was under siege for like three months and the fucking ironworks. They were just lobbing fucking mortars anywhere. They didn't give a yeah. shit when they were landing. They were hitting yeah, civilians. Exactly. Targets. They were no. they didn't give a fuck. No. And if and if, and civilians were talking about them too. They were like they're they're holed up here. I remember this one was happening. And, and and real like Al Jazeera reporters or press TV or whoever would go and talk to him, and they're like, yeah, they're are, are back in those days. I forget whatever happened to this guy, but he was a round. He was he was a Johnny on the spot with the reporting. He went from like fifty fucking subs on YouTube to like half a million because of what was going on. But he was always running someplace and filming some shit. Remember that guy? Patrick Lancaster. That was his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, he did a thing down there with them, and they're like, "Yeah, if if they see us civilians moving around outside the fucking ironworks, just going to work or doing a fucking thing, this, their snipers will shoot at us." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, they were. Uh, <laughs> well, I was laughing that like it's three people in this crew, Associated Press crew. And I could see they were wearing like uh, the bulletproof vest, the vest, and yeah. it said press in English. I don't know, well, that's weird. So they're obviously Western media. And yeah. then uh, there was one scene where they're in a hot, they get, keep going to hospitals. And I think some of the scenes look staged to me, yeah. the wounded or dead. And this one supposed doctor, he takes the crew down to the basement where they have bodies. And the guy, a doctor, is wearing a bulletproof vest that says police in Russian, policia. Why is he wearing this police vest? <laughs> I don't know. That's weird. Yeah. Like, was he a doctor? <laughs> you had to question everything that they were showing. And it was the shaky cam. We're running around. <laughs> shaky cam. When's the first time I've talked about shaky cam? It was one of the, it was, it might have been, it might have been, uh, <laughs> It was the bus. It was the bus. There was a situation in 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 Palestine. Uh, it might have been Operation Cast Lead or Protective Edge, yeah. but there was this bus. Uh, they targeted, and they said, "Oh my God, they killed all these fucking." Talking about the Palestinians did this, and but I, I I proved it was bullshit. But they they had the shaky cam thing, and there was no reason. I mean, there was he wasn't under fire. He wasn't you know, like trying to hide. It was just like he was outside in the in the field trying to show where this bus was. But instead of doing that, you know, like this, he was like this for no reason whatsoever. Uh, this shaky cam. I love the shaky cam. But this documentary <laughs> is so bad. Mm. It was just so cliche and just not. And the the narrator, so the the maker, he's uh, speaking in his accented English and very low tones, like everything is very, it's so dangerous. And it, you know, it's so low that I had to turn up the volume to hear him, <laughs> you know. I think you'd be so shot dangerous. at any moment. Or, I know, it's so dangerous. <laughs> the hushed tones. <laughs> it's fucking, it's wag the dog, man. It's wag the dog. Our, our country has become idiocracy. Yeah. Like it or not, our country has become idiocracy. And uh, Wag the Dog uh, was a prophetic fucking, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was a uh, foretelling of the kinds of fucking conflicts that are going to exist throughout the fucking world from then on. And yeah, it's just, they just make shit the fuck up.
Yeah, I like to look into the background of these documentary makers. So this guy, Ukrainian guy, also was conveniently, remember those protests, orchestrated protests in Istanbul? In yeah, yeah, Park? yeah, yeah. He was there, conveniently there. Giza Park, Giza Park, yes, Gaza Park, Giza Park. Yes, I'm, I forget, I don't remember. And Giza. he also has reported from Syria. So he, he supposedly showed up in Mariupol just as the Russian operation was kicking off. You know, that reminds me of what's his face, that actor. <laughs> it's like they knew, you know, they knew. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, they had- <laughs> well, that's like what I got sued for. Uh, when uh, when the guy who had just happened to be there to catch this guy <laughs> driving down and hitting somebody and then having to throw it in the verse and backing up because he didn't expect cars to be in the middle of this crowd. Um, he just happened to be there Jarring on the spot, um, and this was early into Trump's fucking uh, tenure. And of course, right, he was a uh, he was a uh, former State Department. And he was yeah. one of the guys who lost his fucking gig when he when Trump scaled back all that State Department right. money, and they had to let go all these fucking different assets in different yeah. countries. He was in the uh, Central African Republic. And he was at one. He's a State Department guy, a liaison between the uh, uh, between the intelligence services there and the military and the press. So his job was to put out stories for the press to try to convince the people of the Central African Republic uh, that their government loves them and they don't need to fucking. Uh, join this revolution against them. <laughs> Turns out, even before, right at the same time that Trump was 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 getting rid of him, uh, he had been forced to leave because uh, the corrupt government was overrun by uh, re- the rebels, and uh, his his mission there had failed. But it was interesting that his job was to uh, manipulate the press there, and he just happened to be the guy filming this Trump supporting white supremacist. Uh, and get that out to the press immediately. I mean, he had a team in the hotel room to edit the video, to put the video out there, to put the video on social media while he was running back to the location to do all the interviews. Mm -hmm. You know, they have people, again, uh, I've already been sued once. Yeah. He can try try again. (laughs) Uh, They have people who who specialize in this. Mm -hmm who do this make sure they get the right messaging out there and that's also part of special operations <laughs> part of special operations is not just you know working with these proxy armies uh, and terrorists and doing horrible things but the other part of special operations is you work in support of the military operation whether it's to force a regime change or to see, support a puppet regime um, and you do so by uh, managing the uh, attitudes of the indigenous people and the indigenous populations. So that's also part of, and that's, those operations are, ha- are happening as we speak right now in the United States and the United Kingdom. Uh, and I believe that part of them is uh, these two networks we have of alt media. We have Max Blumenthal on one side and we have Steve Bannon's crew on the other. But again, that's a different video for it. Yeah, the alternative, like um, I have a book by that German journalist Udo of Kolta. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I started reading on, well, this is what alternative media has turned into. Yes. They're yes. prostitutes as well. So you will get, like, you mainstream, sometimes you'll get some good information, but it's mostly crap, or the analysis interpretation is crap. Uh, and then alternative media, they give, they put out a lot of good information, but then they sneak in the. <laughs> The cast yeah. Sunstein, bring them back to the- Yeah, yeah, yeah. they do that. Yeah. So I don't, you know, and these, there's money, you know, I've started looking into the money behind alternative media. Cause I, I mean, I get upset with the mainstream media propaganda, but what makes me frustrated is the alternative media doing this stuff. And, you know, I started looking into the money and figures behind alter- some of the alternative media <laughs> outlets. Yeah. Anyway. It's all the same. I mean, it's. <laughs> I guess it's 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 it's. I guess it's harder messaging, but maybe it's easier messaging. You know, maybe all you gotta do is. I, I, 
I don't know if that's worse. Selling out like that is worse, or selling out like uh, like uh, Naomi fucking Wolf is doing. I don't know what's worse. Because now Naomi Wolf is so she was, you know, the ten steps to fascism and all this shit. She was good. She was she good. She talked about the Boston Marathon bombing. Yeah. She talked about Snowden. Yeah. 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 Uh, and now you know what she talks about? <laughs> she talks about whether or not they're putting uh they're putting uh sperm toxins, sperm toxins yeah. in your Wheaties yeah. note. Pancake mix. Pancake mix. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. It's alternative shit. I looked at her. I went to look at her Substack because I'm a sub subscriber, and she sends me all these when she has a new article up. And I just, I just started scrolling down. And, Holy shit! Yeah, she started turning into a snake oil salesman. Well, you heard, you know, you got to remember who her husband is. That yeah. special yeah. operations and Brian O'Shea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't, even, I don't know what's worse. You know, sucking, sucking up to Max Blumenthal or fucking uh, Steve Bannon. Oh, Max and Blumenthal just received another journalism award. <laughs> this is a new one. I forget the name of it. But yeah. all the figures behind it are pe like Pentagon. <laughs> like Pentagon yeah. figures. Like with uh, National Endowment for Democracy, guys. Yeah. yeah. That's where the money comes from for that award. Oh, yeah. He's, he, <laughs> I don't know what's worse. I mean, I guess that's. That's bad enough, but uh, there's very few people still out here. Very few people still out here doing this. People have just yeah. become frustrated. People have become frustrated and they said, you know what? And they washed their hands over. They walked away. They threw in the towel. They said they, they, they can't do it. I, having said this, two two videos ago, I threw in the towel. I figured, you know what? That's frustrating. Well, that's why, you know, I told you I haven't put out content because it is so frustrating. And I told you, I don't know where to begin. There is so much crap going on. And I used to watch so many YouTube channels back in 2017, 2018. And it's just crap on YouTube. And the, and the alternative platforms aren't much better, really. Yeah. yeah. Not much better. It's just. Uh. It's my phone. I thought it was your phone for a second. Yeah, it's uh it's bad. A lot, a lot of these channels are gone. A lot of these channels have, have our people have decided to either jump into the mainstream or yeah. sell snake oil or uh, jump on the bandwagon with the Max Blumenthal's and the Steve Bannons and just blame China for everything. They got a hangnail yesterday against China. Um, yeah, there's you know there's uh, there's very little future in truth. <laughs> no, there isn't. That's why you know people just hate me like go off on me and I'll just put this label, oh, she's NSA or whatever, because they don't like what I'm saying. Right. But that they can never, sh I'll, I'll ask them, okay, what am I saying that's NSA or CIA or whatever? Show me, and they can't. Uh, they just put this label on. When you just put a label on somebody and you can't explain what's wrong with what they're saying or doing. Right, right. right. You got no, there's no argument then. Right. So it's called fed jacketing. Is what they like to do. They and BB fed jacket. They fed jacketed you. Yeah, yeah. it's the go and tell pro. Mm -hmm. That's what they used to do. And in in uh, infiltrating leftist groups, they come in and they point. They'd say, "Oh, that's a fed," you know, just right. to disrupt <laughs> the whole well, thing. It's also called it's also called snitch jacketing. Uh, yes, yeah, that's another term. The, snitch jacketing. The, the truth movement that was a thing yeah. they were doing for a while. They try to get rid of people. I had a, uh, I don't, it's not about me, but I had a, uh, there's, there's two, three websites at one particular time because I was, I was writing about, you know, okay, Stephen Jones is full of shit. And the, the, the importance of the nano, of the, of the micro uh, uh, spheres of various metals uh, is very important, but not because it's nanothermite. And I was, I proved it and I showed it and that was, that was my thing. And, uh, uh, I got a lot of fucking. Plus, they were trying to. At, at one point, they were trying to dis. Uh, these guys were trying to dissuade folks in the truth movement from talking from talking about uh, uh, controlled demolition. John Gold was a big proponent of that, uh, and he was also a big proponent of snitch jacketing people, saying, "Oh, well, that okay. person is a fed, and that person." Did he do, oh, did he do oh, that too? Oh, fuck oh I didn't know that. He oh. did that. He did that with fucking oh. David Ray Griffin. Oh. He did that with David Ray Griffin. I didn't know that about him. Oh my god, yeah. Oh. He oh, said, you know, you know, there's a, a there's a crony of John Gold's. Oh, Abby Martin's brother Robbie. 
Yeah. He's done that to me. Yeah. yeah. He does a like these accounts that do this. Yeah, Robbie Martin's one. Yeah. I had I had one at one point I had three fucking websites that I know of. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew of them. They might still be up and just defunct, but that was just the whole thing was dedicated to 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 exposing me as a fucking really? fan. Yeah. 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 As a fan. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, or anything they could find. They had dug up my criminal yeah, past. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, yeah, they tried to discredit school me. records. So, you know, anything. But they hold it over me. This is so stupid. They hold it over me because I worked for eight years for NSA. Yeah. And that was over 30 years ago. And I left the whole thing. I wasn't a private con, none of that. But there are all these figures who are like career intelligence, career, and they're okay. Like, what? And they're fine. <laughs> And that they don't get it. I wasn't in management. I wasn't high. I'm not high profile in the alternative world either. But I'm a Fed, really. You weren't. You weren't operations. You weren't one of these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was just a glorified bureaucrat, really. Yeah. It's so stupid. Like they put this label. Yeah, you can't. If you just put labels on people, but you can't explain what it is that they're saying or doing that's wrong, you got no argument. It's like when uh, I would I would cover people like uh, Dwayne Dietz, you know. Um, Dwayne Dietz showed up in the uh, from former NASA guy. He was he showed up in the Truth Movement uh, to work with this group called Pilots for Truth, and uh, Pilots for 9/11 Truth, Pilots for Truth, and uh, uh, Dwayne Dietz was given a lot of credibility. And everyone in, in, the, in the movement, everyone in the movement wanted to interview and talk to him, but his thing was. He was always saying it wasn't a drone. He knows something happened on September 11th with the with the with the uh, twin towers and why did they fall down and blah blah blah. He could talk about that, but his thing was uh, there's clearly no drone hitting fucking the Pentagon. And he was revered in the truth movement for a while until I started digging into his background. Well, he's still, I'm sure he's still quote unquote revered. He's still alive. He'll probably be the next one, assuming. Um, but I dug into his background. Mm -hmm. You know what he did at the Pentagon, at, 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 at NASA? No. He created oh. the first drones. Oh, right, right, right. I think I remember you talking about that. The Global yeah. Hawk specific. Yeah. Yeah. He was, that was his program. Yeah. Um, another program that he had worked on back in the early 1980s was developing this system by which uh, they could remote pilot commercial airlines. Mm -hmm. And this guy was revered in the truth movement. He was his fucking, I always, they, I, I, at the time, five global hawks, 2001. Uh, after September 11th, 2001, that number turned into four. And they said they had lost one because it had, uh -huh. it had a problem. I guess it went down over a body of water someplace. <laughs> there were four after September 11th. And so there's this great picture. Uh, if you look at the early fucking uh, reports on what happened on September 11th, a lot of eyewitnesses said, you know, it looked like a commercial airliner, but it was just small. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, and some people said it was a private plane to hit the Pentagon mm -hmm. because it was smaller. Right. Uh, and if you look at the uh, impression that the wings made on the side of the Pentagon, they're almost the exact same size as a 757-200, which is what the flight was supposed to be, that big-ass fucking Boeing. <laughs> but you know what else has a wingspan about five feet shorter from side to side? Global Hawk. <laughs> it was a painted Global Hawk. And, of course, somebody somewhere, some genius somewhere, uh, took a picture of a of a global hawk at, sitting on the runway in NASA, and uh, they had painted it up with Photoshop to look exactly like a, uh, I guess it's a United Airlines, whatever, what, American Airlines, United, it was United, American, I don't know. As Americans, American yeah. Airlines. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, they painted it up to look like an American Airlines plane. Uh, it, it looked great, too. It was cool. Uh, but his his whole big thing was to try to dissuade people from saying, it was a drone that hit the Pentagon. Right, right, right. And this is a guy who was the father of the modern drone program in the United States. And people didn't fucking make the connection. So I know what you're talking about. It's frustrating. Yeah, you know? it's just me. I was a nobody at NSA, basically. You yeah. know, some low level 
uh, analyst translator. That was it. Yeah. And I, I left and I suffered financially for that. You know, when you leave the intelligence community, you basically have no resume. You can't tell anybody anything about what you did, you right. know, to get another job. So, you know, people are coming after me because I actually, I got fed up and I left. Are you under NDAs still? No. Oh, yeah. I don't, I never, I never have, you know, yeah, you're supposedly not supposed to talk about anything you did. Right. I never, yeah. <laughs> I talk a lot about it all the time. I mean, you can. You can mention that you worked it, but you can't talk about the, the projects you worked on or the intelligence. Supposedly, but I do. I do. Um, I do. You're, supposed, you're supposed to say, no, Scott, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to have to edit that part All out. All right, come back. <laughs> I mean, I, you can't read but, but, you know, my information is so dated. That's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was there before 9-11. Things changed so much. When I left, the internet was just taking off email. Mm -hmm. They were just starting, I remember they were just starting to intercept email when I left. So that's how dated my information is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else is happening in the world today we can talk about? Skim Walker. Well, today is the first day of Ramadan in Gaza. Yeah. Everywhere else, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. Not much to celebrate there. Well, again, yeah, there's not much to celebrate in 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 Gaza. Uh, however, uh, it is still Gaza, and uh, with one one point nine million people after the initial fucking attack. Um, yeah, they've lost thirty one thousand people, which is a lot of fucking people. Don't get me wrong. But when you've got uh, basically a ghetto or a concentration camp with that kind of population in, you've only lost 31,000 people. And you know damn well the people on the other side of the wall are trying their level best to just wipe you off the map because they hate you. Uh, I think that's good. I think that's good news. Uh, and I'll tell you the truth right now. You know, um, I don't know if I'm coming back, if I... <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, the moment Bibi Netanyahu resigns, I'm doing a video on, and the moment Israel has to formally recognize the state of Palestine. Mm -hmm. Everyone always says that Palestine and Hamas won't, won't recognize Israel as a state. That's always been bullshit. That's always been bullshit. You can go back to the Camp David Accords. It's always been bullshit. It was lies from the start. Yeah. Um, they just want Israel, but Israel will never fucking recognize. And they said that since this whole thing started. Mm -hmm. They will never. And, and Bibi Netanyahu said that two weeks ago, I covered it. We will never recognize the state of Palestine because they want it all from the river to the sea. The fucking Zionists want it all mm -hmm. for them. <laughs> right? Well, uh, that's not going to happen. What is going to happen is they're going to have to recognize Palestine. They're going to have to move those settlers. Yeah, the tide has turned uh, in public opinion. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I I didn't watch the Oscars. I couldn't watch the Oscars, but I did. I like to monitor these award shows. Did anyone uh, mention Gaza? Yes. What's interesting, wow. there was last month, remember, I went across the border to see Zone of Interest, this movie. Um, that was made about uh, Rudolf Huss and the commandant of Auschwitz and his family right. living right outside the camp. And the, that won the award for best, what they call international film. So the makers were British, but um, the guy who accepted the award is Jewish. And, but the, the, it, it was mostly in German with some Polish in Yiddish, but it was, yeah, so it was a foreign language film. It won the best international film. Sure. I was I was hoping it would because I wanted to hear what kind of acceptance speech the makers would make. So one guy who was the um, main filmmaker uh, is Jewish and he said, we refute our Jewishness because of the Holocaust being used to do, uh, Israel is using the, uh, using the Holocaust as an excuse to wow. wage war on Gaza. Yeah. Wow. He said that. 
What kind of response did he get from the crowd? I think yeah, he got some applause. I don't think he got so, food. I think people were probably surprised. Um, uh, in Hollywood, him saying that, fuck yeah, they're surprised. Yeah. Oh. So that was a good, that was positive. I was hoping that film would win. It was a very interesting film because they talked, they showed the German uh, corporate executives wanting to use the slave labor at Auschwitz yeah. and other camps. Yeah. yeah. Talk That's what that. it was all about from the start. That's what it was always about. Yeah. It was always about remaking the fucking German economy in a West friendly way, but in a super fucking accelerated path for these fucking banks and, and financial interests that were putting money into fucking Germany and, and, and into these businesses. And they needed a way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and the concentration camps came up and they said, we well, want to just round the people up and force them to work. Just forced labor, you know, slave labor. Yeah. Um, well, good for them. Anybody yeah. else saw them make any comments? Well, there were um, some of the celebrities at the award show were wearing pins to uh, ceasefire, good. permanent ceasefire now. So some of them wore these red pins. Um, there were protests that disrupted the uh, traffic outside. So the ceremony yeah. was delayed because of protests outside. So some of the celebrities had to basically walk because yeah. their, their vehicles couldn't. So, yeah. But there was a lot of anti-Russian propaganda inserted yeah. in the, the, during the in memoriam segment where they uh, recognize people who passed away last year. They started off well with Alexei Navalny. Oh man, really? <laughs> oh wow. That's what it started out. And also, yeah, the 20 days in Mariupol one. So the they yeah, there's always propaganda. You mean they didn't mention Gonzalo Lira first and foremost? Come on. That's what the alter I hate that Gonzalo the alternative media pushes that bullshit. Oh well they're they're upset about Alexei Navalny dying but what about Gonzalo <laughs> Lira oh god. god well good I'm glad to hear that you know yeah, uh, it's, it was it's, all bad. <laughs> as I said before you know that video of that fucking who was that jackass again Shmuley yes. Rabbi Shmuley oh he's upset about that speech at the Oscars oh, oh god he's upset about the Jew him. haters the Jew haters <laughs> calling a Jew a Jew hater that's that's brilliant they would do that. That's how desperate those motherfuckers are. And his whole fucking his video. I was gonna make a video about this, but I said, I, I, I just know. But I mean, it's just it's it's low. He's low. He's low hanging fruit. Yeah. Someone oh, like yeah, us, yeah. he's low hanging fruit know, because he's just obvious. he's just he's so, rabid because he just wants so badly, so fucking badly to be relevant again. It's like that fucking guy Michael Rappaport, just just desperate yeah. to be fucking relevant again. We'll do yeah. anything. Oh, yeah. Will yeah. suck up to anything, yeah. you know. Uh, well, well they, it doesn't matter as long as they think in the end the people they're going to suck up to are going to end up being, you know, victorious and that will leave them in a better position. You know, but fucking Rappaport said that they're, they're keeping lists. You're going to be, which means if they're keeping lists and if I say something or you say something bad about fucking bombing children in fucking Gaza. The bankers are going to keep no. You say you said that, and they're going to make life hard on you. So what is what is the what is the what 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 is what does that actually mean? If you, if you extrapolate from that, that means he's praising the IDF bombing fucking kids in Gaza because he expects these people who are keeping the lists to give him kickbacks or give him special treatment. That's mm -hmm. the, that's the core of Zionism. That's the core of Zion. It's just unmitigated. Self-serving um, greed. It's got nothing to do with religion. It's got nothing to do with the Jewish people. It's got nothing to do with Im improving the fucking improving the Jewish homeland. They will tear the Jewish homeland straight down to the ground as long as they can get more fucking land and they can grab more shit from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with Jewish Judaism, and that guy. Shmuley, that video I was talking about, him coming out saying, we got to lean into the hate. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, people are angry. People, are, and he said, but, but Jews, what we've done in the past is, we've said, oh, I'm sorry we did this, and I'm sorry we did He said, screw that. We shouldn't be doing that. You should be, pre he's suggesting that 
that Jewish people across the world outside of Zionist Israel should lean into the hate they're getting mm -hmm. because of a few Zionists in fucking Israel and make life harder on Jews in fucking Israel and make life harder on Jews outside of Israel, all to benefit a handful of fucking Zionists who are greedy, mm -hmm. self-important, mm -hmm. racist people. That's, that's, his, that's his philosophy. That's what, he was, that's, that's, what he's, that's what he's reduced to. Mm -hmm. um, they're just nasty people. I, I, it's not even worth talking. I get tired of people saying Zionism is communism. How the fuck what? is that? Yes, there are people, oh, you know, it's the Bolsheviks. They are the ones who started Israel. And I'm like, what are you talking that's about? That's the third time my fucking phone has rung. Oh. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, you know what they're doing? They're 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 uh, smearing by association. Mm -hmm. Zionism is communism, so let's support the free markets. If you don't like Zionists, yeah. you yeah. love the free markets. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. That's frustrating. Yeah. So we got that going on. What else is happening in the world today? I did see that Sergei Lavrov has been working. He was talking about Palestinian unity, you know, to stop this. You know that um, they've met with in Russia with all the Palestinian groups, trying to unite everybody yeah. to stop what's going on. Well, the uh, prime minister, the uh, the Palestinian Authority prime minister, just resigned uh, middle of last week. He resigned middle of last week. Uh, I, Mahmoud Abbas is definitely not going to resign, but uh, the prime minister did. Um, I certainly hope Sergei doesn't come up with that jackass that I did a video on four weeks ago. No, five no, 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 that's not what he's talking okay. about. Erdogan is another one who's tried to bring the Palestinians together. Like, this is what's interesting is there was a big summit in Cairo, I think, between... Um, Hamas and Fatah, mm -hmm. and and then and then uh, yeah, before that, Erdogan had invited the leaders of the two main Palestinian groups, Hamas and Fatah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Erdogan also just recently called out uh, Muslim leaders across the world, Muslim countries across the world, for not doing nearly enough mm -hmm. to stop this. Well, people, you know, a lot of these uh, alternative media uh, figures uh, call out Turkey. You know, Turkey's the prime suspect. Oh, yeah, I've had people going off and they, oh, they're Zionists. Erdogan's in bed with Israel. Like, what? Again, that's guilt by association. They also call him Sultan Erdogan because he wants that's to. That's Pepe you know. Escobar and yeah. others. But Pepe's a name. Yeah, Sultan. Yeah. I hate that guy. All because he doesn't want to ha he doesn't want to let fucking the Greater Kurdistan project bust off half of fucking Turkey. Mm. You know, that makes him a sultan looking out for the people in the interest of his, of his the, the, Well, the, that's his, ridiculous. Look at the Ottoman, you know, the West destroyed the Ottoman Empire, broke it up. Yeah. And they even tried to break up um, the Anatolian Peninsula, Turkey itself. What's Turkey now? Yeah. The Turks had to fight a war of independence after World War One. Yeah, they get that they're being occupied, and they have to fight a war against the West <laughs> yeah. to get their country back. Yeah. I like Erdogan. I think he's 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 he's. <laughs> I don't really. I don't. It, it's. I've talked to you before about this. I've, I've, I've said you know there are places where there are countries where you can understand the politics from the outside, mm -hmm. and there are places where. Uh, you can never understand just how deep they go and, and all the different ins and outs. It's like Shakespearean, really. You know what I'm saying? It's like Greek tragedy, all these different things. And uh, I told you Lebanon is one of those places. Yeah. yeah, uh, it's very and, Tur yeah. and Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very complicated landscape. Thing, you know. Uh, but as far as I can tell, uh, I'm not really, I don't think, I don't know of a policy or an action that Turkey has committed uh, or, or possesses uh, under Erdogan that I don't fully understand and sympathize with and in most cases agree with. Yeah, and there's I'm always uh, accusing him of being in bed with Zelensky. No, Erdogan has tried to be a bridge 
between Russia and Ukraine, the West. Like that's right. Turkey. Turkey is the bridge between Europe and Asia. Right. Yeah. But Turkey also said at the start that they would never uh, vote to allow uh, Ukraine into uh, NATO. But he may have changed his position on that. I don't know. But I, I, I had read somewhere that they had. But people uh, say a little bit too much on NATO. You know, they always talk about NATO, NATO, and it's all about NATO. No. It wasn't about NATO. It's about fucking the IMF no. and about what? No. 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 Yeah. So they always hold that against Turkey. Oh, Turkey is a NATO member, therefore yeah. it's in bed with the West. And they tried to blame the whole thing, the Russian quote unquote invasion on uh, their war. They, they were worried that they, they were going to join NATO. And I said from the very start that that's, that's and they said from the start, that's not going to happen. First of all, because they knew places like countries at the time, like Turkey, were never going to vote for it. Uh, but also uh, what really brought them in Nobody wants to talk about that. And that was the fact that the Russian, the Ukrainians were showing Donbass and they had stepped it up. And in December, uh, right before the January, when this whole thing started off, kicked off, <laughs> they had sent in like something like three times the, the usual annual supply of fucking munitions into fucking Ukraine. They sent all of this fucking stuff so they could step it up. So they could bomb the shit out of Donbass, you know, until Russia was pulled into it. They pulled Russia. And that's why all these figures were conveniently uh, in Ukraine, like this documentary maker and uh, others. Yeah. You know, yeah. they were there because they knew, they yeah. knew that what was going to happen. Yeah. 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 yeah, they knew. What else can we talk about? We're an hour and six minutes into this. What else we can talk about? We can talk about uh, how ridiculous the Skinwalker Ranch story is. I think you really want to talk about that. I did. I mentioned it once before in passing. And I stay out of it for obvious reasons. <laughs> boundaries. Boundaries. They're boundaries. I hate to listen. <laughs> it's just, but it's just so funny. They don't understand. People have Skinwalker Ranch. Oh my God. Blah, blah. Well, you can explain. I didn't know anything about it. 2007. Dino Beavers? Is that what they're called? What dino, they dino Beavers. And giant, dino Beavers and giant spiders. Giant spiders. Spiders? And too. huge, huge fucking UFOs seen by four guys. And uh, they all just happened to be there to see the giant UFO. But of course, right before that, all the battery power from their cell phones had died simultaneously at the same fucking time. And so they couldn't record it. However, the golf carts they were driving around on Skinwalker Ranch, those batteries were just fine. They were driving. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, well, I mean, this, this goes to the same thing you were talking about back in the, a few minutes ago. You're saying that, you know, they don't, people don't get it. It's like Alex Jones. He admits he got his start from somebody yeah, Air yeah. Force Intelligence, a yeah. quote unquote retired Air Force yeah. Intelligence guy, picked him up out of fucking public access television, gave him his start, gave him a studio, gave him a crew, and then paid to get him syndicated all across the fucking country when they were taking control of alternative media. Bill Cooper used to say about him, uh, William Cooper, Bill Cooper, they killed his ass right after 9-11. Right after 9-11, yeah. Bill Cooper, uh, who, by the way, predicted 9-11. Bill Cooper uh, used to say about him, he was a fucking asset. He was a fucking Alex Jones, you know. But, you know, we talked about that. You said, you know, we, we, we talked about that segment. <laughs> That's early, you know. That was, what, 90 fucking three, 94 95 maybe that was early and then they gave him access to the fucking bohemian grove thing he said that he walked through the woods and none of the security people for all of these heads of state that are supposedly there none of them figured hey we should watch the woods no okay fuck it so he and his his buddy with cameras they got in by walking through the woods yeah um anyway <laughs> they were started they were doing this infiltration back in the day Oh, yeah. I, I found some good articles about, you know, I wanted to, you know, I told you I'm frustrated. I don't know where to start with content, putting out content. But the thing that fascinates me is the money 
the figures, the money behind these alternative outlets and uh, I found some good material about the foundations behind a lot of them. And there's a term I found I love, it's called regulated resistance. So this, <laughs> this writer, he says, how can, you, and this is what I always say, how can you claim someone is anti-establishment when they come from the establishment and their establishment assets? That's the same thing as controlled opposition. That's, that's the modern definition of controlled opposition. Yes, it, it's another term like control, but he, this writer calls it regulated resistance. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Max Blumenthal. Mm -hmm. That's Max Blumenthal. Many, yeah. That's Steve yeah. Bannon. That's fucking RFK Jr. That's Naomi Wolf. That's mm -hmm. Naomi Klein. Yeah. It's a lot of them. You can, you can add a lot of them to that. And I told you, remember, I, I hadn't really looked at Mint Press News much lately. And then I looked at their Twitter page and their website going, oh, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> You know, they used to put out some decent stuff and it's just yeah. nicely crap now. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of these outlets that virtue signals about Palestine, unfortunately. They'll put a good information about Palestine, but they always, they're sneaking in all this uh, regime change propaganda. It's yeah. too bad. Yeah. Too bad. Um, so, Skinwalker Ranch, uh, 2007. <laughs> now, this is important to understand the context. Um, in the lead up to uh, the Edward Snowden deal, mm -hmm. the rolling out of Edward Snowden so that he could say, so Obama could come out hours afterwards with Glenn Greenwald and Laura Petraeus, whatever her name is. Yeah. Um, so he could come out and say, well, we have to have the discussion between the need for security and the need for fucking privacy. No, we don't. We don't have to have that discussion. The discussion is written in the goddamn Constitution. Go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. But they needed a nerdy guy. Everyone could like, oh, this guy's really a whistleblower. And so they manufactured him and manufactured yeah, Kira. Him NSA, too. He was an NSA. Well, he was CIA, but he was CIA sent, supposedly sent to NSA through a contractor yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, you know, infiltrate or whatever. Who the hell knows? But um, it's it's... Beside the point. That was, but in order to get that to happen, to bring about the privatization of the surveillance state, which is what CISPA was, right? <laughs> but it was also, there's a lot of pushback, but big business really wanted it, wanted it bad, wanted it, because oh, we, we now have, you know, Alexa in our goddamn houses. And you have no, you have you you have no reason to believe that your cell phone isn't fucking following you around, tracking every move, and listening to what you say. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, that. back in the day, a guy did a fucking uh, 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 a researcher said that, and they had to bring in somebody from the AP to go attack him. And he said, uh, "Yeah, I'll just meet you at this place, and we'll talk about it." She goes, "Okay," and so they meet. This is this is how this started. They meet, and this reporter's talking to him, and she goes, well, what makes you really think you can do They can't. They know they can't do that. He goes, yeah, they can. He goes, no, they can't. They record you off your cell phone. You're just scaring people. You're a Luddite. And she was talking about all this shit. He took out a fucking thing, put a, a, a personal recorder, put on a table, pushed play, and it was a conversation she had with her fucking videographer in the taxi cab on the way to them. It made her shit herself. And now, today, we just accept it. I know. That's so, what they've done to us. Yeah, it's Snowden and Assange, all these intelligence psychological operations are very interesting. That's another thing that interests yep. me so much. And that's why I made those videos about the Pegasus Project. I never finished. They were good. People still don't get that. So all these people like, oh, Israel, 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 Israel they'll put out this bullshit about the Pegasus Project. Well, NSO group is Western-owned, basically. So yeah. yeah, it started out Israeli, but that's like this California. Israeli label. Yeah. But it's a regime change. It's propaganda. So yeah. they smear all these countries um, for spying, using Israeli software and spying on activists and journalists. The journalists are mainstream media propagandists, the journalists. And the, the countries and the countries they smear are the ones they want to regime change. Yeah, including Mexico. 
yeah. Mexico, many and, others. And yeah. love, right, right, right. And of course, yeah. Nicaragua and Venezuela. <laughs> Let me get back to this real quick. So I, I have to tell you all that to tell you this. So early about 2005, this massive fucking huge goddamn facility was being built, supposedly for NSA. Yeah. But it was in between yeah. the two Utah. major cities in fucking Utah. Yeah. And it was going to be staffed primarily by Mormons from Brigham Young University. Um, but I mean, it's just a massive, massive server firm. I mean, just huge. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. And that was their payback for something else. We could talk about that in a different video. But they needed this stuff in place so that when they did privatize everything, then they could not only give, <laughs> give these fucking companies the ownership and the rights to do with your data whatever you want, but also they built them the fucking facilities to house the shit in the first place. The big business didn't you have to put that, didn't, it's like when they, it's like when we pay for the research and development of something in NASA say for, I don't know, drones. And then once we get it all worked out and people like Dwayne Dietz get all the fucking kinks worked out of it, then we hand the whole thing over for free to Northrop Grumman or whoever fucking makes yeah. these things. Yeah. Right. That's how our system fucking works. Well, in 2007, they knew this was coming, but they needed a fucking distraction also because you had the election coming up. So you had this guy <laughs> go to a shitty little house someplace I, where is Skinwalker? Is it Arizona? Is it Utah? It was one of those Nevada, places. Isn't, it's Nevada, isn't it? It's Nevada. Yeah, yeah. Because you're talking about Harry Reid. Right. So he goes to this fucking shitty little goddamn hole. Supposedly this guy was in this crappy little dingy bungalow, one-story shithole. And he sees an apparition, a ribbon-shaped fucking, a, oh, it's an entity. It's, is it an entity? Is it a fucking ghost? What is it? We've got to investigate it. So he goes to Harry Reid, and he gets Harry Reid in 2007 to put in for all this money from mm -hmm. you, the taxpayer, <laughs> to investigate the Skinwalker Ranch. Do you know who that guy was? He was DIA. Oh, he was defense intelligence. People forget about DIA. You've talked about a lot about that. Yeah. He was DIA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, because remember back in the day, in the in the Bill Cooper days, mm -hmm. even before fucking you know Alex Jones was around, Bill Cooper had been tasked with air by Air Force intelligence yeah. to come out in the seventies and be mm -hmm. pushing all this fucking bullshit about aliens to distract mm -hmm. people from what was going on. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, he admitted it to it later and he apologized for it later. But I mean, <laughs> this is they've they've this is this kind of shit has been done for a long time in this country. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So DIA guy comes out. We were supposed to believe this guy from the DIA what was he was he buying crystal meth in this shitty little fucking rundown fucking bungalow house and in, in wherever the hell it was. He, he'd never set foot in that place in his fucking life. He'd be caught dead in that place. But no one questions it. No one questions the story coming from DIA. And also no one questions these days talking about Skinwalker Ranch. No one talks about the fact that the people who currently own it and run it and operate it are all fucking Mormons, first of all, and have been affiliated with the Mormon church. And the guy who owns it outright was told to buy it by a CIA guy. And... Another story I told you about the big UFO hovering over the fucking place. And then he and three guys, one surgeon and his two fucking bodyguards uh, who all saw the and swear they saw the fucking UFO, a big ass UFO, broad daylight. But their phones weren't working, even though the batteries in the fucking golf cart were fine. Uh, he was there because, as testified to by the guy who owns the ranch, who talked about the fuck the CIA guy told him to buy it. The same CIA guy told him, sent this fucking surgeon and his two fucking bodyguards. Why would he have two, why the surgeon have two bodyguards and his two bodyguards mm -hmm. to the fucking ranch that day so they could witness the fucking UFO? Mm -hmm. It's so fucking convoluted, but it's saying it's so obvious, but people don't talk about it. It's like Dwayne Dietz. You know, what's what's Dwayne Dietz's big claim to fame in 9-11 truth? Well, something hit the Pentagon, but it damn sure wasn't a fucking drone. 
Mm-hmm. Well, gee, I wonder why he would say that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, there you go. So that's Skimwalker Ranch. Oh, yeah. They, they're supposed I know to you're dying to talk about that. Dino beavers. How can you not talk about dino beavers? <laughs> dino beavers. It's almost like they're just, they're, they're, they're just, they're fucking with us just to see, you know, okay, how much bullshit can we get away but with? People, this? But people fall for this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so frustrating. You get frustrated. I get frustrated. It's frustrating. People just don't get it. They just don't get it. Yeah. They don't, but first of all, it doesn't pay to get it. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, the first yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and you don't get a lot of uh, a lot of friends. You don't have a lot of fucking. Your family members tend to leave you the fuck alone when you get it. You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, your employers might not be your employers very long when you get it. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy being a square peg in a fucking round hole. I have been called that so many times, especially up here in Canada, because I just didn't fit in. You know, I still have this. I mean, I pre- I'm glad I have this view of the world from a perspective of an American and Canadian citizen. <coughs> good. Yeah. And I always look at these regime change operations around the world and I see what's going on in the West now. Yeah. Like Haiti. We could talk about Haiti. Oh yeah, there's that. If you wanted to talk about Haiti, yeah. Another Blumenthal operation. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I wonder. I often wonder how fucking involved in the was it 2018 Nicaragua thing. I wonder how how involved Blumenthal's intelligence was, you know, in that fucking thing. Was it 2018? It was 2018. Right? In Haiti? What was no, no, Nicaragua. Oh, Nicaragua. Oh, well, see that what was suspicious is he arrived like a hero, got a hero's welcome as that whole operation uh, was dying down. So basically the Sandinista government had defeated the coup attempt and he uh, he arrives like a hero and everybody like, oh, it's Max Blumenthal, our hero. And so he and I think it's um, Michael Hedges or Thomas Hedges. I can't remember. Chris Hedges' son was yeah. Max's videographer down there. Yeah. And they, unfortunately, they, because people weren't down there, weren't really aware of who Max Bloomsall really was. They gave him a lot of access and he violated restrictions. He was going, he and the videographer were going behind like police tape or whatever, going into the areas where the regime change agents were operating, had their operations base. And so they were collecting intelligence, I guess, to see what what didn't work, what they were doing, what didn't work to report back to the State Department or whatever. Right. And he promised to make a documentary about that whole- He never did. Never yeah. did, never did. I remember that. And he yeah. conducted interviews and what from my, from what I heard, he would interview these uh, opposition figures and he'd pitch them softball questions. Yeah, just. Yeah. Anyway. Well, there you have it. Anyway, uh, we're at an hour and a half. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're done with that? Right. Well, I don't know. So you going to start making videos again? Yeah, I want to write too, because I think some people prefer writing. And you know this too from writing. There's more you can do writing. And then some people prefer videos. And it works better with some people if you do videos. Yeah. yeah but, but it's like uh, these intelligence psychological operations like Assange and Snowden, Pegasus Project, and others. That's yeah. what fascinates me. And the money behind the alternative media. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can criticize the mainstream because, you know, like with Assange and Snowden, the mainstream and the alternative media are t- basically saying the same thing. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Someone tried Someone tried to compare uh, Assange saying he was going through the same thing the Palestinians are going through. <laughs> oh, I know. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. 
I'd make. What a hearer that rapist was, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Anyway. All right. So we good? good? Yeah, that's a good talk. Okay. Give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> Nom land. You know where that comes from? That comes from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was the oh, second okay. one, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That is not a movie for you. Don't 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 even no. look it up. No, I I, never, no that I is I not a movie for you. That. No, no. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, it's good talking to okay. you. Yeah, it's good talking to you. And uh, you're not gone for good. You're just stepping back. Yeah. 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 Uh, yesterday, I did, I met, let me get a video yesterday, but I did post some stuff up from uh, Gaza and some stuff yeah. on my yeah. website. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah. My website's kind of like a music aggregator site now. I just kind of. I noticed that. I noticed that. I noticed okay, that. You know, uh, uh, see some stuff that's 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 relevant. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. uh, but, you know, the, the Gaza, the whole Gaza, I think I might even just be burned out on, you know, the Gaza thing. Yes. You know, Gaza. <laughs> Palestine is. I've been a supporter of Palestine for a long time, and the whole thing is just still going on. And yeah, unbelievable. Uh, and I see so many people out there who are obviously upset about it. Obviously, want to help to see if they can bring about some kind of change, but they've just become fatigued. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, um, I'm not saying I'm one of them. I'm just saying that it's it's. You know, you can only look into the abyss for so long before it uh, before it has a real profound effect on you. You know, mm -hmm. I told you two weeks I was in a in a very bad place. You know, two weeks before I made my decision. So, mm -hmm. but no, I'm not gone. I'm. No, no, no. I'll still even. I gotta you know make some changes in my life, and then when I do. Uh, I'll still come back and occasionally do videos and talk about. Well, stuff. you said when you started out, you were working full time and you just yeah. did this research and whatever. Yeah. As a, yeah. 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 So, difference. anyway, I don't want to make this about myself. Uh, no, let's it's get not. back. That's... Let's get back to your beautiful cake, your kami cake. You want to see it again? Yes, please. Oh, should I take another bite? Mmm, tastes good. like communism. <laughs> communism, communism. It's the cake. <laughs> Let them eat cake. There Let you go. Cake. That's good. <laughs> That's nice. That's very nice. Let them eat cake. Mm. That's a thumbs up on the commie cake. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Mm, communism is so scrumptious. <laughs> you held the you held the lid upside down, by the way. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, here we go. That's right. it. Right. That's it. Kievsky, they, in Ukraine. Kievsky how do you, tort. How do you how do you pronounce that? What is it? In Ukrainian, it'd be Kievsky tort. But in Russian, it would just be Kievsky tort. Kiev to it's silver. a tort cake. It's a tort. Tort. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. their name word for, you know, in Russian Slavic languages, there are a lot of Western words. So that's a French word, really. Well, tort is a, is it a flourless cake? Isn't that a flourless cake? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's like a heavy flourless cake. I don't know. So that, that's not light and fluffy. That's heavy, right? It's a tort. Yeah, it's solid. It's pretty solid. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's what it is. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. I don't know the, yeah. So, so much for your food reviews. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not some expert on cuisine and the difference between, anyway, that's, they call it a cake, tort. Tort. Uh, so that's it's Kiev, you know? Kiev, not Kiev. The only reason I would know that is because back in the day I was uh, I was employed by the um, that hotel. Uh, what was that hotel? What was the name of that hotel? It's across the street from the Jefferson. Uh, not from a, uh, a tobacco company. It's across the street from the tobacco company. Berkeley, oh. Berkeley, Berkeley, Berkeley Hotel. Yeah. Like Richmond. You went there. You I went there and I can't remember what it was called. Yeah. 
<laughs> and they offered a tort. So that's why I know the only reason I know what a tort is. Kami cake. Kami cake. The Kiev Kami cake. I'm gonna call it. Yeah, you take one. You take one bite of that, and you love the glorious state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so there are all these people online. They'll call themselves communists, mm -hmm. but then they demonize the state. I'm going. Right, right. That's right. How does that work? They're anarchists. <laughs> Yeah. You give Milton Friedman one bite of that, and he's a statist immediately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay, we done? We good? Yes, that's enough. That's enough. Okay. Okay, I'm going to shut this down. So thanks, everybody, for watching, if you're still there. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah. we won't watch this full thing. Anyway, there you go. Thanks yeah, a lot. Good to talk to you. It's always nice good talking to talk you. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.